Hey folks, welcome to another new video on one of the features in Worldographer. This is about one of our new features. Uh, we introduced it a couple weeks ago and, and made a bunch of improvements just uh, in a new release as of today, uh, March 28th, as I'm recording this. This is version 1.46 of Worldographer, and what I did so far was just went up to File, New World Kingdom Map to create this uh, blank map in front of you. Uh, but with that out of the way, uh, once you've got that, uh, once you've got a map in front of you, what you can do, and this is inspired by WebDM, recently did uh, a video, a couple of videos on uh, creating a hex crawl with our prior program, Hexographer, which Worldographer replaces. And here we added um, some functionality so you don't have to do quite all of it on, uh, on your own. Uh, in their case, uh, he would... Uh, um, identify what hex might have something interesting uh, with uh, some charts or with a, a roll and a, on a one out of six, maybe something would be interesting there. And so what we do is once you've identified that, um, you can go to generate random hex crawl details by right clicking on the, um, on the hex and pick, do you want a minor, major, or medium uh, option? And it will then go through its charts and create something for you. So we picked minor, and so here we have a little way station, something, a trading post along a bit busy road, and this is fully editable. You can you can go ahead and um, tweak that and save. Um, if we wanted something uh, more major, if our, our, our charts decided something was more major in this other hex, we can go to major, and here we've got a, a city, and we've got a whole bunch of information about mm -hmm. the city uh, that's auto-generated, and you can Again, rewrite all of that uh, or regenerate it if you want to. And um, uh, that's really it. It's a matter of you can go through your whole map uh, or just the starting location, that, that section of the map that, that the players are starting out on and uh, go through that uh, process for each hex, um, you know, using whatever, whatever, you know, you can just look at the map and say this part you know, this area here needs something additional, this part here needs something additional. I should point out that, that Worldographer from almost from day one has had uh, another tool to generate a whole bunch of details all at once. You can go into Generate Nations and Empires here. And uh, we've got, you know, this this map was created by default with 10 nations in mind. And so you can have a couple of extra options here, but click a button and almost instantly you've got uh, a number of nations created and cities and, and, and so forth, and borders all set up. And that's based on data up here, the uh, World Info, which is another dialogue with a number of nations. So you can spell out those nations ahead of time uh, before you do that step and at least give them names. Um, and, uh, you know, again, this was all auto-generated, though. Um, based on uh, some generators built into the system. Um, so you've got that option as well to go through and, and create everything. Um, I'm going to undo that. Well, let's just show a couple more random features. Uh, let's pick a medium one. Here's a uh, military camp is, is located here and here off in the hills where we got for a medium there. Another military camp there. I promise they're not all military camps on medium. Uh, here we've got a radiation, so something something went awry here. And you know, if you don't like it, then you know you can go. These are all placed as features on the map, so you can go to the feature and you can select it, and then delete it. And uh, you know, you can also uh, select a feature that way and pull up the notes that way, um, or you can go into Add View Edit Note and then click on the yellow box that signifies there's a, a note there and pull up the note that way as well. If you don't like the yellow boxes, you can turn them off with a little checkbox down here. Show the, the show checkbox next to notes will turn that off, but they're still clickable. If you get you know roughly in the center of the icon, you're able to pull that back up. All right, so that's kind of part one of this feature. Part two, hey, what all data is there and how do I change it up? Uh, if you go up here to configure, configure world and name data, um, we've got a bunch of stuff here already, um, a bunch of tabs uh, that, you know, we'll probably do a different video on going over these in detail, a, a newer one. We've, I'm fairly certain we did one 
uh, you know, two, three, four years ago. Um, but you can select languages and you can customize the languages used to generate uh, people and locations. And then you've got feature information. These are details about different features. So this actually is used by the uh, what we just saw, the, the, the random uh, hex crawl location generator. So if, if a location shows up as castle, uh, this is how you can control that. And you can add a new attribute, you know, if you wanted to add in how many towers does it have or, or something like that. You could click add new attribute to do that and then give it a number of options and separate those options by semicolons. You can also separate, um, uh, you can provide options within the option with square brackets and commas in between them, as you can see here. So, for example, this here, large, medium, you know, what, what type of castle is it? Large or medium, stone or wood, with what kind of towers, uh, round or square. So you've got that, that, that's how that is done. I think that, look at some of the other examples and you can figure that out. But the new thing that we added to this was encounters. And so here is where you pick a terrain and this is just trying to do a string matching, and, and it's trying to do the best string matching possible. So if a particular tile has forest deciduous in the name, that's going to override forest. However, any terrain also will uh, apply um, as well. And so you can pull up the uh, forest deciduous medium, and so there's, there's really one option for forest deciduous medium, but as I said, any terrain also would get loaded in there, so you're not going to get that one option. You're going to get all of these as well. Uh, so you've got, you know, uh, 10 other options just for medium. And then if you go to major, you've got several things that are major. Now, when it says feature, that means that it's going to use that feature information to fill in those details. You know, if, it, if, if, if you type in just feature, then that's what it will use. Um, if, however, let me go find, a, well, let's look at the um, minor ones here. Yeah, so here we've got a mix. So if, however, it says feature, colon, colon, that means it's going to put a feature icon on the map as well as this one line description. Okay, so a couple of these things have just one line descriptions here. This is feature, colon, colon, so it's going to put on a crater symbol for the map, and it's going to then pick among these options, uh, you know, for what to, what, what to display. And if it doesn't say feature uh, to begin with, or feature colon colon, then no icon gets met, added to the map. And, the, 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 um, and, and so I, I, for the data set that's built in, I believe everything has a feature. I wanted to have that. But if you want to have a real trivial thing uh, that doesn't have an icon, that's just a note, if you put in, uh, if you don't start it with feature or feature colon colon, then it's going to just um, just use that text as a note, but not add an icon to the map. So that's how you make these changes. Uh, I click apply, and then afterward, anytime in that same session of using Worldographer, those new options would be used. Of course, if you want to save those, you know, if you make a bunch of changes, you're probably going to want to save them. So you would go to Save Configuration, which will bring up a file chooser, and you can save it to a file. And later, if you restart Worldographer and you want to load in those options that you've got, you hit Load Configuration and it will bring up a file chooser to let you load in that data set that you had saved previously. You can also hand edit that once you've, once you've got it saved. It's, it's just a text file, a properties file, and if you're familiar with that kind of stuff, you can, um, you can probably do it by hand as well. Um, I should note also that if, if you want, when you apply or when you save the configuration, it will um, do it do a check on the languages and so you're going to see that in case if you made any changes to the languages screen you're going to see that 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 verification and if you made no changes it will probably just say hey the language changes checked out there's no problems and it will let you apply or save um, so that's the way that works so anyway that's a quick look at the new hex crawl uh, functionality in worldographer as a version 1.46 this is currently on uh, sort of our beta branch. We've got a bunch of changes behind the, the scenes that we've done. Uh, and that's, that was done mostly a couple months ago. So we're just being extra cautious in, in keeping it that way. 
um, so that the people, the folks that are a little bit more comfortable using a beta version are, uh, are able to do that. And folks who aren't don't have to, but, um, since it's been a couple months and we've, we have been shaking out, uh, uh bugs, but, but, but few recently, fortunately, um, that will probably be the official release actually in a, in probably a day or two. Um, so there you have it. That's the latest with uh, Worldographer, and uh, thank you very much for your support, and I hope this video is uh, uh, helpful for you, and I hope the new functionality is also helpful. Bye.